Hello everybody, I'm back. So we're gonna continue. Um, we've done two rows. And what we're gonna do is the next four rows, okay? I'll probably only do one with you tonight. But the next four rows are going to be exactly the same as the last one we did. So I'll probably just do the one row. And then because you know what they're going to be, um, please feel free to move on. Because I'm pretty busy tomorrow, so I'm not sure I'll be on here. Um, but we'll see. So we were at the end of the row. I chained one. Okay. We're going to turn our work. Okay. And we are going to do a double crochet in our first loop. Okay. First stitch there. So we went through two and two. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the front portion of each stitch this time for the next one, two, three, four stitches. Remember on the last row, okay, we did the back loop. So because now we're basically working with the back of what we have, we are just going to, we are going to be working the front loop, the front part of the stitch. Okay, so I'm going to just go through the one, which is going to be the front one. I'm going to grab my wool, pull it through, go through two, and wrap, go through two. So that was one. We're going to do it again. Okay. Go through one. Pull it through two. And pull it through two. And again through the back portion of the stitch, wrap around, pull through two, wrap, pull through two, wrap around, front, did I say back, sorry, the front portion of the stitch, grab our wool, bring it through, Go through two and go through two. Okay, so now this is where we had our trouble. Trouble, if you remember. So we're going to wrap it once, we're going to wrap it twice. Now, what we're going to do is where we had the trouble stitch, which is this one, we're going to do a back. Uh, what do they call it? I can't remember what it's called, but basically what you're going to do is you're going to go up th through the stitch, okay? You're going to stick it through the hole, go around your treble, and come out the other side. I am not a crochet um, expert, so yeah, I'm... Uh, I will get it done, I'm quite sure. I'm looking to see if I wrote down that stitch, and I don't think I did. I, I'll i get it, I know it'll come to me. But anyways, because we're working, again, we're working on the back side of the material, we want our design up front. Okay, so we're going to go through, we're going to grab our wool, and we're going to bring it right through and back 
up. No, sorry, I got talking. We gotta wrap it once, wrap it twice. And then we're going to bring it through like so. So you're gonna have one, two, three, four loops on your hook. You're gonna wrap it around and bring it through two, wrap it around, bring it through two, wrap it around and bring it through two. Okay, so that'll be the way you're gonna do this all the way down. You're gonna have your four where you're going to pick up this part of the stitch, okay, right here. You're gonna do that four times and then you should be at your treble where you're going to go behind the stitch. You're not gonna grab any other stitches, you're just gonna go behind it, okay? Wrap it twice, go behind, grab it, pull it through, wrap, go through two, wrap, go through two, wrap, go through two, and everything will work out great, okay? What that's gonna do is that's gonna make like a rope stitch for you. It's gonna go straight up and it'll look pretty, I'm sure. But that's what we're gonna do all the way across. Okay. My phone is being super loud tonight. So I'm just checking that. Okay. So I had an interesting day today. Um, double crochet through the front part of the top stitch only. You're just going through the one and go through two and goes wrap, go through two, wrap, go through two. Okay, you're doing that twice. It's a double crochet. Double means two. We're doing that for four. Four of them. Okay, so um, after I got off here this morning, I was feeling pretty bad about the relationship between my stepson and I because it is rather um, stressful. So I did reach out and tell him that we should sit down and hash things out and hopefully get on the right track. Um, I let him know that it was hurting me as well and that you know he did come to me a couple of months ago but he hit me off guard and I have to be very careful because I can have a bad attitude and I try to be so careful with my words so as not to offend anybody and that's um no, that can be tough for me just to, especially when I'm throwing off guard it'd be one thing if he had said hey you know like I did to him hey you know things are pretty harsh and <sighs> just feel like we should talk shit out especially considering we are family okay now I did talk to his stepdad about this okay because well I had appointments but that'll be what I talk about um because I'm not going to be on this for very long I did talk to his father let him know I reached out right on the text message I sent him which was nice I think to me it was his stepdad didn't see anything wrong with it. No, sorry, his dad didn't see anything wrong with it. And appreciated the fact that I reached out. Because, hey, you know, it is his son. I mean, let's face it. And I'm sure as much as he's staying out of it, I was sure that he had to have been a little bothered by it as well. To my surprise though, he's um, at his end with it too. And 
he sees what's happening which is kind of a relief for me it really is and he understands that I am very protective of him I've been with him for 20 years and I don't want to see him getting hurt by anybody and I don't care if it's his child or not you don't just reach out and hurt people because you think you can so I mean at least I know it's not just me I'm not just seeing things so anyways that's that's all together fine I sent the text message I sent it early this morning assuming he was at work my stepson assuming he was at work so not expecting to hear back from him but because I had appointments today his dad had to um, come home early so his dad proceeded to tell me that he was home today his his son was home today because where he parks his vehicle where my boyfriend parks his vehicle he can see where his son is living and see whether he's home or not and he was home when my boyfriend went to work the car was there mind you that was early this morning and when he came home which was about two in the afternoon the car was still parked in the same place <coughs> the son didn't reach out at all didn't acknowledge he got the text message i mean it could have been a no i'm i'm done i'm tired with it or, or anything i mean i wouldn't have cared if he had told me to f off to be honest with you it's not it's kind of expected but i mean i do a lot for him a lot given him a lot of things because he likes them and I mean I'm talking plans okay nothing major like I'm not giving him a thousand dollars mind you I've probably given him a thousand dollars worth of plants over the past two years but that's neither here nor there it's not that I haven't tried because I have so anyways long story short um, I looked at the text message I sent him it says red not delivered read which means it was delivered and he did read it and I got nothing back so I sent him another text message letting him know that I knew he was home or at least his vehicle was there and um, that since he ignored me all day I'm assuming his answer one two three four is no uh, no as in he didn't want to get together and discuss our issues now that I'm prepared and know what I want to say and I can word it nicely um, and that's fine I mean that's his prerogative he's an adult um, I guess at the end of it, I did put, have a nice day, which my boyfriend says, that was snarky, <laughs> which maybe it was, I don't know, I just didn't mean it to be, but I mean, that's just my personality, and anybody that knows me knows that that was me being nice, so you take it or leave it, whatever. The message is through he read that message um within the hour yeah yeah within the hour he read that message so still nothing back just another ignore so we have decided that the next time he wants something he can go to the people he would rather spend time with now the big disappointment is we are going out to a restaurant um, 
It's called the Mandarin in London because it's, well, my daughter's 10th wedding anniversary. And it's also his father's birthday tomorrow. So it's when he was invited by my daughter because it's her anniversary and she wants to share it with people and she invited family the ones that she knew could afford the mandarin okay it's the way of putting it the ones that could afford it and he's busy my stepson is busy so now he is not only shitting on two family members for a family that well if he if his relationship falls apart he will no longer be a part of that family But the bridges that he's burning in the meantime, well, okay, sarah, sarah, right? It is what it is. So that's the way that's gone through. I just know that if he doesn't show up tomorrow, the only one that is going to be truly hurt out of this is his father, knowing he's invited knowing that his child knows it's his birthday and knowing that his child is choosing to do something with somebody other than family which maybe he does have other engagements but i mean you're taking family a it's a wedding anniversary a wedding he was at um and it's basically going to be a big F you to his father. And, well, <laughs> I don't do well with that. And somehow I got to figure out how to just mind my own business and let him deal with it in his own way. So that's the end of that topic. So, fun part today. I told you I got the I got COVID. I keep wanting to say the COVID. It's not the COVID. <laughs> but um went had to go I got COVID three weeks ago and it wasn't the COVID itself went away, but the symptoms didn't. What had happened is my chest got tight. Um I had a cough when I just sitting down I could get dizzy if like playing a game a Facebook game uh, that candy crush I could get really dizzy if I stood up um, and I learned that three weeks not to stand up fast I learned that so what ended up happening was uh, I'd get really dizzy, like really dizzy, where you get little black dots in front of your eyes. So I did call my doctor because my COVID test that I took here at home, these things, you pick them up at any pharmacy, which is awesome. They're free, thank God, because that's how I found out I had COVID. Took two tests in a row, positive tested positive for an entire week because I took another one five days well five days later I took another one it came back um still positive what I then had um one COVID test left there's five in those I had taken one before and um that one came back positive so I waited a couple more days which would have put me on day seven and it was I think it was negative it had two lines but the second line was way up near the top so 
Um, they call that a negative. I don't, but whatever. I see two lines. I'm like, ah, right? So I did pick up more when I went to fill my prescription yesterday. And uh, today I had to go for blood tests, which <laughs> they were running like 14 tests. Thank God it was only two vials of blood because, whoo, I'm already dizzy. <laughs> I feel faint. <laughs> Take some blood, right? So anyways, then I had to have a urine test. And it, uh, an x-ray on my um, lungs because the doctor's hearing something in my lungs. So he says an infection has set in. And my blood pressure was low. And there's something about my white blood cells being um, low. So yeah, uh, COVID virus it just keeps on giving so anyways I went and got that done I'm a PSW and I got some uh, while I was in waiting for my x-ray I got a job as a pal uh, private home care awesome so um now she has a friend that I knew from years ago. Oh, see, I messed up. One, two. One, two, three, four. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, like, I'm only charging her, like, $20. The going rate's, like, 30 But I've known her so many years. Like, many, many, many years. And, um, it's just a friend of hers, but she looks after him and she worries about him when she's at work and that. So she said, you know, she's got to talk to his daughter, who also works, obviously. And, um, they'll probably contact me. So that's awesome. Always good news. Met the old gentleman today. He's quite the character. And he likes his brandy. <laughs> so I told him, if they hire me, we'll have cereal and brandy. Except I drink rye, so. <laughs> you gotta just love the older people because they're full of amazing stories. Like, amazing. Things have changed a lot in my lifespan. Let alone being almost 90 years old I think he was I gotta turn this damn ringer down holy crap this phone makes more racket than is absolutely necessary there we go so um anyways he's just an old fella he could barely walk but he can still flirt his way through life. <laughs> oh, that's cute. So, anyways. Um, that happened. Then I had to go to another building for blood tests. Thank God it was in Chatham. Um, I don't know if you're watching this video. Um, if you know Chatham or not. It's, it's a city. It's more like a big village than it really is a city, but, I mean, it grows. It's growing all the time. And it was only, like, three blocks away, so it's not like it was a big thing. Now, what I really liked is if I had a parked in where I had to go get blood, it was going to be $3, which is silly. Now, there's a variety store right next door. They don't advertise it. It's the unspoken secret that everybody learns that they've got to go there. That if you go inside and just give the variety guy a dollar, he lets you park there because it's customer parking only. So as long as you spend a dollar, you're good to go. And he gives you a little parking ticket with the date on it so that you can park there all day for a dollar 
where in the city can you park for a buck, right? And it's just a little mom and pop variety store. So I just went, gave them a dollar, parked there. They live right next door. You just walk around the fence and you're right there. As opposed to a place that I was in for five minutes, literally five minutes. I walked in, I went and did my um, urine test sample because I had to go knowing I had to get that I was smart enough to wait so I was I went in I did that I came out got called in and they took two vials of blood and anybody that's gotten blood knows oh I hate needles I am a person that hates needles and when you get into the healthcare profession seems to be what your life's all about because you've got to get needles for this and needles for that and they're drawing this they're drawing that they're testing this they're testing that there are you are just a pin cushion <laughs> whatever i made it through <laughs> so anyways we're on our way home okay and we've seen ksc now i'm living in a small town we used to have KFC on the 401, which is like a 10 minute drive from where I live. They used to have KFC there, but um, Popeyes got the contract, I guess. So now I'm not too keen on Popeyes. I am a KFC person. Mind you, since they've been bought out, um, it's not as good. It's kind of like our Tim Hortons. It was bought out by the Americans. Now, our Tim Hortons coffee, I swear it's like the old Coke used to be, okay? The old Coke, they used to put actual Coke in it to get you addicted. <laughs> but they, they took that out, thank God. I mean, thank God for the food um, place. <laughs> But, um, anyways, yeah, Tim Hortons. I don't know what they used to put in that coffee, but I could not drive by one. If there was a Tim Hortons, if we went to the city, I could easily come home with four coffees because, well, you know, like, I mean, it's the city. You're, we go there. Uh, you get a coffee because you're driving all over the city, right? And then you're leaving and you got to grab a couple at least and then of course we pass the service center so you got to get one more just in case you have a late night and if you do you can just throw it in the microwave and heat it up the next day well the americans bought it over um i don't know before covid everything's before covid right and they've done something that the coffee it's not the same and I don't get the dark roast, but it's not the same. Now that's the part that's messed up. Our Tim Hortons coffee has, it's not worse, it's just not as good. And our McDonald's coffee that used to eat away at your spoon has gotten good. Like, McDonald's actually has some good coffee now. Or so anyways we went into kfc to get some chicken gotta love well i love kfc now that's the other thing i used to drive truck now i don't know where kfc in canada gets the chicken but they're just small pieces doesn't matter what you get they're small pieces but you go to the states and I mean, what are they feeding those chickens? Because those babies are huge pieces. When you get a four piece meal, it takes me two days to eat it. You get a four piece meal here and I'd still be hungry. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. But anyway, they've been bought out here by some yum company. I don't know what it is. So anyways, <sighs> getting to my story, I know. Anyways, I um, we go in, 
it took us a while to decide what we wanted because I didn't feel like a whole bucket of chicken. But I got the chicken tenders. They, we've got these um, box meals. And you basically get your meat, fries, and another side. And your soft drink for, I don't know what it was, 13 something or something like that. I got the receipt here. Uh, thirteen twenty nine. <laughs> so, whatever. I ordered the chicken strip meal. It came with um, three strips and two sides and my soft drink. So, that was fine. Yes, I do realize Canada pays a lot for something. You can go to the States and it's, it's like half the price. It's ridiculous. And they got twice as much meat as we do. Like, their chickens are on steroids, for God's sakes. So, anyways, our poor little chickens are starving to death, I swear to God. <laughs> so, anyways, we go in there, we put in our order, and I'm reading the board. On everything except for your single items, it says order an extra side item for um a dollar thirty five. So what the heck? I mean it's a deal. I don't know why. Regular dollar ninety nine. You're getting an extra side. An extra side is what it says and the sides can be fries, mashed potatoes, some kind of a uh, like a a coleslaw potato salad macaroni salad. That's your sides here. Um, so that's fine. My boyfriend decides he's going to order an extra side. So he's got three sides in this box meal. Two of them came with the meal. Um, he ordered an extra one. So we're standing there waiting for our food, you know, read all the postings on the wall, read the nice big sign that's flashing all these things. And I was done reading that. So I uh, decided to read my receipt. My side's extra side was a dollar ninety nine. So I said, well, that don't make sense because it says up there that it's one, two, three, four, that it's um supposed to be a dollar thirty-five. So when they packaged up our um when they packaged up our meal, I just said to the guy, um, just a question. Up there it says that on every board except for the single items. Like, you know, like some people might just want to order a piece of chicken. Or maybe they just want um, a small salad. And the small salads, I mean, if you're going to order one of those, you might as well order the big one. At least you have enough to know that you had it. Um, I said, but it says a dollar thirty-five, but um, we only got, or we paid a dollar ninety-nine guy says yeah <laughs> I said no 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 I said on every single board except for the single items it says extra side a dollar thirty five now I could order um piece of chicken and fries okay if I wanted an extra side it should have been a dollar thirty five he is saying that it doesn't mean nothing. <laughs> like, this guy, he broke my brain today. <laughs> I just kind of looked at him. I, that comment confused me. It doesn't mean anything. I said, what do you mean it doesn't mean anything? I said, it says... An extra side is only a dollar thirty-five this month. What do you mean it doesn't mean anything? 
He says, well, it's not when you order the box meals. I said, what? He goes, well, you already get two sides in it. So if you get another side, it's a dollar thirty-five. I said, no, 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 it's got a picture. It, and it does. It's one of those digital screens. It shows the box meal with everything that comes in the box, your two salads, your meat, and your soft drink. Plus one plus extra side or something it says. Okay, and it has a picture of a salad. I said, it says right there, a dollar thirty-five. It's on every single one of the boards. Extra side, a dollar thirty-five. <laughs> the guy says that's not included on what you ordered. <laughs> I looked at the guy. I said, so what are you saying? Your board's a liar? And he goes, no. <laughs> but you've already got an extra side, so you can't get an, a, another extra side. I said, no, we don't. I said, we got what came in the box plus an extra side. I read it wrong. the guy blew my mind i i really felt like telling him he needed to take his digital signs down and just throw them in the dumpster because they're useless <laughs> so oh my gosh i i couldn't let it go there was just no way because that to me was the lamest excuse i ever heard he could have just said, I don't, he could have said anything else. <laughs> like, honestly, I wasn't wanting my 64 cents back. <laughs> I just wanted to let him know that you need to line your till up with what your sign says. I mean, it's 65 cents. It's not that big a deal, but it became a deal because your advertising is a lie. So anyways, we get in the car and we leave because at this point I'm like, I'm ready to just yell at the guy, but I don't, I keep my calm. I mean, thank God for medication. <laughs> I keep my calm, I go up to the car and I'm like, I'm calling corporate because they got false advertising. And if KFC gets 100 customers a day at 64 cents, that's an extra $64 a day. And then you multiply that by the month of 30 days, it's almost $2,000. Okay? Now that $2,000 is probably two employee two of those employees um paychecks for the month <laughs> i don't mind i don't mind um pitching in but like really <laughs> so i tried to call corporate i googled it i mean we google everything right i don't want to send an email that nobody's ever going to get back to me with. I don't want to do that. That was the only way to get a hold of them. Through Google. You know how I got a hold of them? <laughs> I got the phone number of Facebook of all places. The girl that takes care of Canada from headquarters who takes care of Canada there's a phone number on there. It was a 188 number, 1888 or something like that. What is that number? Because <laughs> if you're in Chatham on um, Grand Ave, you gotta go. In, <laughs> you gotta go in there and order an extra side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a 
break their brains. <laughs> oh my god. So, anyways, um, <laughs> it's like, oh, I, I get a hold of the girl. So, I asked her, I said, okay, your signs, I'll say, you can order an extra side with everything but your single items for $1.35. But, and she goes, um, well, some of their franchises are privately owned, and they can pretty much charge what they want. Now, that's something else I didn't know. I thought, even though you buy a franchise, that particular company sets the prices, but they don't. A private owner can charge what he wants. Oh, I did a triple where I was supposed to do a double. They can charge what they want up to a certain percentage. Now, they can't charge twice as much for a meal. It's up to a certain percentage, which, whatever. You know, everybody, since COVID, needs to make a buck, let's face it. Um, <laughs> but... I said, okay. I said, well, they've got one of your boards up there that you guys um, take care of, which they do at headquarters. You know, they punch in whatever the specials are going to be or whatever. I said, I'm in Canada. That's how I found out the girl I talked to is in Canada. I was going to get you that number. But my, my phone drives me crazy. Oh, yeah. So it was 1866. 364-0862. That's what the phone number was where I got a hold of an actual person I could talk to. And I wasn't on hold very long at all. So that was kind of nice. Um, the one on Facebook that I called gave me Boulder Bible Chapel. Not Facebook, sorry, Google. So if you call Google and they give you one eight six 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 four five six nine six, that sends you to buy Boulder Bible Chapter. Now Boulder Bible Chapter, when you call there, they're offering you a free item. Well, hell, why not? So this free item one two three four, if you are over the age of fifty, and I am. So it's like, okay, push one now. <laughs> I pushed one. They want to order me a life alert bracelet for free, where if I fall down and can't get up, <laughs> will be. I just have to push this button, and somebody will be right there to look after me. I am, I'm in my fifties. <laughs> I mean, I look after 90-year-olds that have life alerts, and, I mean, most of them don't need it, but they're 90, they're fragile, you know, like, when they gotta go pee, they gotta head to the bathroom as soon as they feel like they have to go pee, or it's gonna be a wasted walk. So, anyways, you know, that's neither here nor there. People maybe there are 50 year olds that need one but i just said to the girl i don't need a life alert bracelet <laughs> like, i called to talk to kfc <laughs> she couldn't help me because she was with medical imaging center so i called back the first number the one eight six 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 four five six nine six number it belongs to boulder bible chapter I don't know who these guys are, so I'm really confused. I'm like, okay, so I hung up. I looked for a different number on Google. I never found a different number. Thank God for Facebook. So <laughs> one of the few times Facebook was actually helpful. So anyways, I call her up. And I told her the situation, blah, blah, blah. And then I continued telling her that, you know, it's your board in there. You guys program the boards that run across 
Canada and the U.S. She goes, yep. She goes, oh, they had a board. I said, yeah, on everything except for your single items, you can order an extra side for $1.35. And she goes, yes, that's right. I said, no. Guy told me the board didn't mean nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and she says she goes oh no 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 she goes no 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 if they've got one of our signs up there like that that we program and she goes and it sounds like it is one of the ones that we program um they can't do that they have to charge what's on the board i said no your board <laughs> guy told me your board means nothing <laughs> Whatever's on that board and whatever's punched into their, um, um, what do you call it, cash register, <laughs> that's what they go by, the cash register. The board has, <laughs> has nothing to do with it. And she goes, no, that's, that's not correct. <laughs> Which kind of gave me a sigh of relief anyways. So now they're going to be investigating it. Somebody is going to call me tomorrow and get the story from me. Now, here's what I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping they're going to send me a certificate for a free meal because <laughs> I'm going back to child <laughs> to hand in my free voucher and I am ordering an extra side. <laughs> I really, I uh, just like, wow, because then, you know, I, I can keep this free meal thing going. I don't care. <laughs> oh, oh, so that was, that was my day visiting Chatham. And it's like, wow, okay. <laughs> but, it, oh, shoot, I can't talk and do this backwards. Nope, I messed it up all the way through. So anyways, I'll show you the good part of what your shawl should be looking for, looking like all the way across. See, it's going to look like that. And we're causing, we're forming ropes all the way across. So they'll look pretty good. I'll show you how I messed up and how easy it is to tell. So right in here, I missed. Yeah, right in there, I missed my front post, ah, front post triple crochet. I told you I'd remember. Then it looks like I got these two, and those ones, and that one. That one seems like it's a little wide. And it goes okay for a while. And then we work our way across. Yeah. So anyways, that's what it's going to look like, the gist of it. So if you keep doing that. Now, I wanted to show you when you turn your work around. Now, I messed up, so I've got to frog it. But I'll show you, okay. So when you work your way, let me just fix this one right here because that drives me crazy. Okay, uh, we're doing a back post triple crochet going this way, okay. So I've got a frog mine. And what does frog it mean? Well, frog it, rip it, rip it. That's what it means. You're ripping it out. That's the first time I heard that lingo. It was actually. I'm like frog it. The hell am I frogging it for? And somebody goes you're rip it. <laughs> I'm like oh rip it. Okay. Got it. I got it. Okay. So when we turn our work around. You're going to get to the end of your row. Right. You're going to do your one chain one stitch and turn your work then what you're going to do is you're going to go to your first stitch in okay now remember 
we've got our stitch because we're working on the front of our work now we're going to take the back portion of the stitch and we're going to do a double crochet four times one Two. See, it's it is a counting game. <laughs> it's, it's not um not a big counting game, but apparently that KFC I get talking about that story and it just it sends me for a loop. It really does. Four. Okay. Now, oops, I didn't go all the way through that one. Now, what we're going to do, because we're coming to our, um, like our rope, okay? Wrap it twice. Go to your rope. Remember, you're going behind it, but from the front, okay? So your needle ends up in the back of that stitch. Can you see that? yeah okay we're gonna grab our wool and we're gonna pull it through we are going to here we go wrap it pull through two wrap it pull through two wrap it pull through two okay now what that's does is that's giving us a rope it, it, it'll look like a rope and you want it to line up because if it doesn't line up it's just gonna look crappy so you want that to line up all the way across and what we're doing here is our stitches are kind of sinking in with a little bit of a lip just to say hi we're still here okay so that's what we're doing there and we're doing five rows of this. So we've done one in the front. Number two is the back. Number three is the front. Number four is the back. And number five will be the front again. Okay? So you got to remember, it's easy enough to know where you are because you're just following the pattern right your rope stitch is when you're crocheting is either going to be in the front or the back of your work it's very easy this with the design on it is your front the back it has no real design to it it's pretty plain okay so there's your back and there's your front looking all pretty and like I said in the beginning of this video the first video it doesn't matter um, what wool you use it doesn't matter you want to get your shawl done quicker use a thicker wool you want to do more work use a nice thin wool it doesn't matter because I got some nice thin stuff in there but I want to save that for um, maybe like a, a baby blanket for the summertime because uh, it's very it's very pretty wool it's it's shades of gray so you know beige and it works its way up into a nice dark charcoal gray it'll be really pretty so anyways um, I just use no name wool I'm not going out and spending $8 on this little 50 gram thing of wool because it leaves me wondering, like, where's the beef, right? Uh, you're going to use that up probably on one row. So this scarf that could cost you maybe $20 to make would end up costing you 100 And if your plan is to sell your work at some bazaar or 
um, a sale of any kind, you're never going to get your money back. Let's face it. Now, if you crochet just for the love of crocheting, hey, you go for it. Get that nice, soft wool because God knows some of it. So I go, having cashmere. Um, this upsets me, but <laughs> not as much as McDonald's did. So here we are. See, ripping it. And that's why it's called frog it. Ripping it out. Thank God I didn't get all the way across and notice that, because that would have been a real bum out. So, I want a total of five of these rows, okay? Um, this is row number two that I'm ripping out, but um, when I get back on, I will um, have my five rows done, and we'll see how pretty that looks. And then we'll decide what stitch to do next. Maybe, um, maybe to break it up. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. We'll figure, we'll figuring it out as we go. We are literally building a pattern here. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Got to admit, that's cool. We are building a pattern. I've, I haven't built any patterns yet. I really haven't. So, I'm building my first pattern right here with you. Isn't that awesome? So, I don't know. Anyways, that was my story for today. I just, uh... <laughs> I, don't know, I think it was worth telling. Because <laughs> I've never gone into a restaurant, read the board, and had to tell me that the price that they have on there means nothing. Mm. Oh, well, that's cool. So it's almost Halloween. I hope everybody is ready. Got your Halloween cos your Halloween costumes for your kids or uh, your Halloween candy. I used to love it when my kids were young enough to go trick-or-treating. I really did because I loved taking them out and um, watching them get so excited. Last year, uh, Halloween was really mild, which is nice for the kids. My kids used to go out. It would be a bloody blizzard. And they just couldn't get to enough houses. I could remember that. Ugh. But I used to go trick or drinking because, well, I lived in a small town. I knew everybody. They'd see I was cold and I'd go trick or drink and there you go. Mommy was inside. <laughs> And I had to drink fast because the kids wanted to get out to more doors. So that was always fun. And then, of course, they were cold on the way home because, you know, they stayed out until they couldn't take it anymore. So Mommy got to go trick-or-drinking on the way back, too. Which they didn't mind because now we got to stay inside longer. And they usually ended up with more candy. So my kids didn't mind that crap. Any of you guys ever go trick-or-drinking? It's, that's the adult version of trick-or-treating. Pretty cool. I didn't drink in front of my kids very often. But Halloween I did because I was cold. Oh, and if I took them to bogging, I used to mix. Well, my boyfriend at the time got me into cherry brandy and hot chocolate. Oh my god, if you like those... Um, what are they called cherry blossoms that you can buy at a variety store if you like those you will love cherry brandy and hot chocolate it warms you up in the winter time and it tastes just like a cherry blossom absolutely totally awesome hmm and it's halloween again <laughs> that's become my um october drink <laughs> The only thing I like about winter is the older you get, the less you like winter. Trust me. That cold sets into your bones and it does not go away. But for some reason, when your kids are little and you got to supervise and entertain and the whole bit, you're able to deal with it. Maybe it's because you're in your 20s. That's what I'm going to guess. Well, I was in my 20s. I do realize people have children younger and people have children older. So... I mean, it's all cool. 
Oh my goodness. I I I don't know. I I'm kind of looking forward to tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know. We're going to the Mandarin, which will be really nice. Two celebrations in one. I don't know why my daughter got married two days before my husband's birthday, but she did, and that's all cool. Uh, you know, that's pretty good. Uh, ten years of ten years of marriage, two children, a son that's smart as a whip, and a <laughs> daughter that's just got a lot of lip. <laughs> and she's so adorable. She's not at school yet. <laughs> She thinks nothing of telling you. This is the way it is. Girls are not the way they used to be. I will say that much for you. So, anyways. Um, I don't know. I can't think of any more stories today. But that... For God's sakes. I can't talk and do this. I'm doing a lot of frogging. Okay. So, I guess I'll let you go. Um, a total of five rows. You're going to end on the front. Right? Yeah. Because the front was one. The back is two. The front is three. The back is four. The front will be five. And when I get there, I will think of another stitch that will look pretty with our design. Maybe we'll try. I don't know what we'll try. I'm not going to put any suggestions. I'll just Google and find a stitch. And once I get people into my group, because this is my second video, um, it hasn't really gotten out there yet. But once I get people into my group, you'll be able to help me. And, I mean, the more people we have, the more ideas we have. And then what I think I'm going to do, well, what I will do, is we will, like, vote on it. Okay, how many people like the idea of this stitch, that stitch, or whatever stitch? Um, press one, two, or three. You know what I mean? We will, uh, and it, everything will become like a, a group pattern. Isn't that cool? And if I sell the pattern, what I do, what I'll do is I will hold, um, draws once a month and send somebody a surprise package of yarn. What what else would you give? Oh, crochet hooks. Maybe there's some really cool crochet hooks out there. I've seen some really pretty ones. I think I've actually got them on this uh, wall. Because, I mean, crocheting. You know, birthdays are taken care of whether it's by you or to you. That's when I was really, really, really heavy into um, making, um, what do they call that? You know, you make little animals and dolls and all that, which we will also do. We will do a crochet something, maybe a cute little doll or um, teddy bears. Right now I'm into teddy bears. I like making my teddy bears. Those are always fun to make. And uh, I made um, Winnie the Pooh for my son's um, partner's sister. I made Winnie the Pooh. I just had him pay for the material because well, it's his sister. <laughs> and then he got um, the theme was Winnie the Pooh. So... I made a comforter that was sewing. I made a comforter, one of those bubble blankets. Um, I made him a nice big pillow. What I did is I bought a pillow and I just made the pillowcase to go over it with Winnie the Pooh and the honey pot. Honey pot. And then I made him, um, oh, what was, oh, crocheted him a Winnie the Pooh. So, and because I love doing it, I'm not out to really make money off of um, my crafts. If I can cover my costs, I'm, I'm happy because as long as I cover my costs, that means I got money to go and buy more stuff. So that's what I charge them was the price of the materials. But I mean, 
his family. And when it comes to family, you do what you can, right? And we love him. He is an awesome guy. I don't know what everybody's opinion is on um, how people choose to live their lives. It's none of my business. What they do in the privacy of their bedroom is none of my business. No more than what I do in my bedroom is theirs, right? Mind you, I'm in my 50s. There ain't a lot going on in my bedroom, but that's besides the point. <laughs> so, anyways, um, yeah. The one thing I don't get, though, is all these letters. It's like, Jesus Christ, they've got an alphabet. When I grew up, we had gay, bi, and cross-dressers. I don't know what this LGBY elemental P is. It's like, get over the letters. That's, that's the only part that really is, it's getting overdone. Like, come on, it's, it's overdone. <laughs> so okay I am not going to keep frogging so I'm going to stop doing this particular stitch with you and I will see you uh, in the next day or two when I had decided what the next stitch will be so five rows you're going to be ending in the front okay see you next time have fun everybody enjoy your weekend and if I have another funny, crazy-ass story, which I'm going to the Mandarin today, tomorrow, so if anything is possible, I might jump in and just tell a story. <laughs> okay. Have a good night, everybody. Take care. Bye.